Welcome back to The Breakfast, and uh, now it's time for Off the Press. It's a quick review on uh, major news stories across the country. Uh, we are going to be joined in this conversation uh, with, uh, by Mr. Chris Wadu, the publisher of uh, CKN News. Um, and of course, I would like to say welcome once again. Yeah, my pleasure as always to be here with you. I will, while we wait to um, get connected with uh, Mr. Chris Wandu, we'll take a look at some of the papers. Um, I guess... We'll start with The Guardian. On, okay, this Daily Sun is already on your screen, so we'll start with that. Govs back IGP on FSAS ban. Say, move greatest relief ever. Police Affairs Ministry to investigate allegations. Lagos CP disarms operatives. Uh, that's on the front page of the Daily Sun uh, this morning. Uh, more um, issues. NUT jubilates as Buhari approves new salary structure for teachers. And then, of course, Emo panel asks Okorocha to return 106 billion naira. You find uh, details of that story on page 26 of the paper. Um, for the NUT uh, celebration, World Teachers Day, there is a writer to that story that I, I omitted, and it's uh, retirement age raised to 65, seven years to 40. Um, that's uh, good news. We've been talking about that a bit on the breakfast this morning. I'll we'll try to see if we can uh, talk more on that uh, before the guest uh, comes in. Ondo Guba, your vote will count. INEC assures 1.478 million electorate Schools reopening, FG deploys 60,000 voluntary environmental health workers in 774 local government areas. ASU seeks adequate funding infrastructure in public schools. And then, of course, uh, the 2023 presidency is captured here with the story. Igbo youths slam PDP chair over no zoning comments. That's uh, on page 26 of uh, the paper. I understand we have on the line um, Chris Wandu, the publisher, CKN News. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning to you. Uh, we're looking at the Daily Sun and a couple of headlines there. I don't know how familiar you are with um, the headlines, but let's uh, take a look at the Gov's back IGP on FSAS ban. Well, um, it doesn't the trade is everywhere now. Um, the issue of and uh, um, because of uh, your reading at the headlines. Um, All right, uh, just, Mr. Uh, Wandu. Yes, please. Um, unfortunately, the audio isn't so clear. Um, we might need to um, call you back. Are you hearing me now? Oh, I think it's better. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. As I was saying, the uh, um, the governors uh, backing the uh, uh, the right. EDSAS um, campaign is a good one. And good enough, the Lagos State Commission of Police um, said that um, he's taking action based on the directive of the IG. Uh, but for me, um, I don't know whether anything good can come out of that. Because this is practically the third or fourth time that uh, an inspector general of police will be giving a, a directive on SARS, and uh, within a few weeks, you see them back doing what they are doing. Um, personally, I'm not a, an advocate of total uh, elimination of SARS as a unit. I personally believe that what we need is a reformation. Um, that, um, that unit of the police need to be totally reformed. But some people believe that uh, how do you reform what is not reformable? Um, I don't think that um, um, it, it, the SARS is not reformable. The problem is that those that are being uh, uh, saddled with the responsibility of looking after that particular unit of police have not been doing a good job. And the, those, uh, I, I think that a lot of orientation needs to be done. And uh, training and retraining 
they are very good officers in the Nigerian police. Uh, I can assure you that over 70-80% of the personnel are very, very intelligent and people that do their job. It's just a few of them that just take the laws into their hands and give the, uh, the police the, uh, the image, the current image, um, which is not good enough. So I believe that um, we should be reforming SARS um, because if we don't, the problem will just have more problems on our hands. Some of these guys have been so entrenched in the system that um, they will even get themselves in other uh, criminal activities. So uh, I totally agree. I, I just uh, came back from the East. Between the U you and I, I saw over 100 checkpoints between Shagamu and um, uh, the Niger Bridge in Asaba. What they were doing, I don't know. They were just extorting money from people. Just as you're moving from one checkpoint, within two minutes, you'll see another one in front of you, and you'll be wondering what they are doing there. And um, so the IG, let's see what, whether he can match his words with action this time around. And um, that's my personal opinion on that. All right. Um, there's another headline there. We'll, we've talked a bit about the NUT um, salary, new salary um, upscale by the Buhari administration. So I'll just leave that for now and get your thought on this one that I seem to have missed earlier. Push for reforms. If uncomfortable with laws, Buhari urges Nigerians. Um, I don't know if you are familiar with that story. Push for reforms. If uncomfortable with laws, Buhari urges Nigerians. Hills NAS for timely passage of budget. It's mischievous to call us a rubber stamp assembly. That's uh, Lawan. What's your take on that? <laughs> uh, well, uh, when uh, the current uh, leadership of the National Assembly came on, especially the Senate, uh, the Senate president was said that um, anything the president brings that they are going to pass, that um, they are in tandem with him and they're going to work with him. Um, so most people misinterpret that as mean that they're going to just be a rubber stamp um, uh, national assembly. And um, so um, that is, it is not Nigeria saying that it is what they said. So, uh, but being a, a members of legislature does not necessarily mean that you must be at war with the executive. The fact is that you just have to do your job and make sure that the interests of those you are presenting is well taken care of. It is not everything that the executive brings to the, um, to the legislation that must be passed. They must look at it properly and make sure that whatever is being passed is in the best interest of uh, Nigerians. There are, instances, there are instances where issue of loans, the executive uh, brought uh, the bills um, on issue of loans, and most Nigerians believe that those shouldn't go, but you see the National Assembly just passing it without giving uh, a second look at it. Even when there are some level of opposition, um, the leadership of the National Assembly will just breathe down on it. So I believe that there can be a harmonious relationship between the executive and the legislature without necessarily make it looks like they are just a rubber stamp um, to just rubber stamp whatever the executive comes with. Uh, they have to do their job as it was supposed to be. Uh, that's my personal opinion on that. Then uh, we, um, I know that uh, we you spoke about um, uh, the Nigeria uh, Union of Teachers. Yes, uh, the, um, the news coming out of the federal government yesterday for NUT was a very good one. Uh, one of those that believe that teachers deserve their wages. And the gun at the days where we said the reward of teachers uh, is in heaven. Some of them don't even know what they will see when they get to heaven. So why don't they start enjoying their, their reward from here, earth here? So I commend the federal government on that. Um, I, although I've not read the, what the incentives are, but uh, if it's something, anything that can improve their welfare, that is good. But why also trying to improve their welfare? Let us also look at the infrastructure on ground. Do they have what it takes to work as teachers? That in itself is also key. Okay, Mr. Mwando, let's uh, then quickly move to the Punch newspapers. Uh, I believe uh, there's a story there that uh, uh, says lecturers can't work on uh, empty uh, stomach. Uh, the strike is indefinite, says um, ASU. It also says federal government withholds our salaries while negotiations are ongoing. Uh, the union is uh, still uh, complaining. Um, uh, the Punch also says uh, commercial uh, vehicles would start uh, petrol to gas conversion, says uh, the, that's uh, from the vice president, uh, Professor Yemi Oshimbaju. Uh, Nigeria's gas exports recover, surpass pre-COVID level. 
TCN and discos hindering 4,000 megawatts generation daily, allege uh, the uh, Jenkos. And also, Assets Commission Bill places recovered loot management under the AGF. A few other stories on the punch this morning. Um, NUT demands legal backing for new salary scale and service years. And uh, also, Oyo Park manager official assaults female journalists and uh, children. Three remanded for exhuming 10 corpses for rituals in Ikiti State. And um, also, uh, uh, the candidate of the APC in Edo State in the last election says, I'll continue pre-election cases against Obaseki. Ogun State plans IDP camps as Onya Dam begins water release. Um, I think these are the major, major stories we have, or stories we have on the Punch newspapers uh, this morning. Uh, Mr. Chris Wandu, please go ahead. Yes, I look at the um, Obaseki is a Yamu issue. Uh, it was gratifying yesterday that he said he's not going to challenge the election, but we continue with the pre-election matters that are in court. It is his right. Um, so he, he has the right to continue with the case. Uh, but the fact that personally, I, I think that it has got into a position where in this country, we just look at election as um, like a game. You lose some and you win some. Personally, I would think with the intervention of the National Executive of um, APC, uh, Mr. Eze Yamu by now should have congratulated um, Obaseke. And to me, personally, give him a, a part of his manifesto and said, this is what I think, in addition to what you have, that you should be able to look at. Those are the program I also think that because with the election of Obaseke, Obaseke is no longer, um, the, he's not the, just the candidate of the PDP now, he is the governor of Edo State. And it is my belief that every, he's, he should be able to govern, irrespective of which, uh, which political party or position belongs to and the rest of them. So if the Yamun has anything, I believe that it's just forwarded it to Obaseke and they look at it. And if areas are he thinks that it's not that he can look at it. But it is his right. Uh, let's see how that uh, pans out. Then we look at the um, issue of ASU. ASU has been on the table for long. Um, the universities have been under lock and key since uh, March, at the beginning of COVID, and the um, federal government has given a directive that all schools should resume on the 12th of October. I personally think that um, ASU should be able to shift his, uh, uh, his position for now and let these universities reopen while negotiations continue, uh, as it were, with the uh, authorities. Students have stayed at home for too long. And if care is not taken, the whole, the, 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 uh, the entire session may be wiped out. This is October already. By now, they should be, the students should be moving to, uh, to another session. So I think uh, ASU should continue negotiating with the federal government while they give room for um, the schools Wando, to reopen now so that students Mr. can Wando, go back let to me, school. Let, let me quickly ask this. Do, do you feel the... Um, reason behind this extensive negotiation that never seems to end is a complete lack of trust between both parties or between ASU and the federal government. Yes, uh, for me, I think it's more on the part of the government than um, ASU. Um, several negotiations, uh, ASU have gone into several negotiations with the federal government, uh, which the federal government have refused to um, fulfill. But at times, when you are going into, um, you are sticking to your position, there are certain uh, things you also have to look at. When two, two elephants fight, it's always a grass that suffers. So I think the interest of the student should also be taken into consideration why as to continue to pursue his demands. Uh, that's my personal opinion. Um, those in the private universities have already re are reopening. And that is why most parents no longer feel safe sending their stu um, children to, um, to either state or federal institutions because you see a situation where students get into the university and the course that will take them four years takes them not less than six years. Whereas those in the private university within four years, they are done with their studies and they've gone for service. So I just believe that ASU and federal government should just be sincere, especially federal government should be sincere with ASU and make sure that most of those demands are fulfilled. 
All right, let's All take right. a quick look at the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, the big one there is teachers get new special salary skill. Um, a couple of writers do it, um, enumerating the details. Buhari extends retirement age from 60 to 65 years in service from 35 to 40. Tuition fee, automatic admission for biological children of teachers. Uh, those are some of the writers to that story. Um, agitation for restructuring won't be stopped. That's Sultan Middle, Sultan, uh, Middle Belt leaders uh, to Buhari. Agitation for restructuring won't be stopped. Don't ignore calls for restructuring. Awolowo Domusu tells uh, FG, that's uh, another one for you. Ondo, 10 political parties merge with PDP. Uh, just uh, beneath the masthead of the Nigerian Tribune, we have, I now have a bigger responsibility to everyone who believes in me. That's uh, Bibi Nigerwina Lekon speaking. You find details on page 14. Trump announces he is leaving hospital. Uh, he's been there for just uh, two days. Two days. Two days. That, that he must, I, I watched a, a report that said he must be one of the most impatient uh, patients ever <laughs> <laughs> to uh, have come down with a virus. It's an election, you know. You know a yeah, there is the so. pressure of the election. But he has to take care of himself. All right, um, Mr. Wandu, FG planning more palliatives for COVID-19. That's according to uh, the vice president on the Nigerian Tribune. I, I want to ask you something about that particular story. Uh, is it, should the government be talking so much about palliatives other than creating structures that will allow people fend for themselves? Between you and I, I hate the word palliatives. That word palliatives gives an impression that we are beggars and that Nigerians are just being given handouts uh, to be able to feed. I think this, this government should be very, very creative and more creative and more sincere with Nigerians. They have been giving us so called palliatives since the beginning of COVID until now, nothing has been, billions and billions of Naira have been spent on, their, on the so called palliatives that even some of this money have not been, have found their way into the private account of certain individuals. So I, I totally agree with you that we should be looking at structures instead of so-called palliatives. Teach me how to fish. Don't give me fish. That is what they should be giving Nigerians. They should be looking at long-term uh, solutions to problems of Nigeria. And not just whenever we talk about this, they say, oh, we are giving you palliatives. Part of the palliative that they talked about was the issue of some countries, if you go to countries that give palliatives, even Ghana, for months, they asked their people not to pay for electricity. What did we get? We got over 100% increase. Um, uh, in petroleum, they increased. Taxation was increased all within this COVID period. And what would we continue hearing that we are giving palliative, we are giving palliative. They should just you stop using that word because it's sorting to Nigerians. It's insulting to our uh, uh, sensitivities as Nigeria. We are not fools. So you don't they, they should go be able off, to put Mr. basic Wandu. infrastructures on place. Uh, uh, Mr. Wandu, I know you, that is something that is sensitive for you. Uh, but let's uh, look at another one. Uh, that's the southern middle belt leaders to Buhari. Agitation for restructuring would be stopped. Uh, uh, that agitation has been ongoing for a while. Any hopes? that uh, some reactions were coming? Well, Nigerians will always uh, uh, agitate. And um, don't forget that the, this issue of restructuring has been um, in the front burner for a long time. And now more Nigerians are coming out to add their views on this. And um, there are several ways to read. One is going through our elected representative in the National Assembly to look at the constitution as it were and look at areas where amendment could be made to take care of some of this agitation. That is one, because we presently have elected representatives. Second is either to go into another constitutional conference, but the result of the one that we had, the past time has not been implemented. But the most difficult part of it for me is the way that some of the A's of the presidents have been reacting to some of these agitations 
And we just saw the press release by one of the uh, senior aides to the president, where he was saying that uh, nobody should, uh, there, there's no going back on this. People should not uh, say this and that. We are Nigerians and we have the right to say, and it is the right of the government that we elect to also listen to people. So if high ranking individuals like the uh, GO of RCCG and some other uh, Nigerians are now saying that, let us look at this. Then I think it's for the government to be able to listen to the people and find a way. But there will always be agitation because people continue to feel marginalized. And once they continue to feel that level of marginalization, they will always go for such. So uh, it is for the federal, federal government to look at uh, what Nigerians are saying and see if the fact that they're saying that there should be restructuring does not mean that the country should be divided or we are going to go our separate ways. What they are only saying is that look at some of the defects in our constitution and see how we can make to give everybody a sense of belonging. That is what is, they are talking about. Nobody is talking about another civil war, whatever. Mr. Wandu, that, that definition is not the same for a lot of persons because, I mean, we don't seem to have a conclusive definition of what the kind of restructuring that we want. You might be saying that uh, is to, you know, equity among, uh, across the board. Some would be saying, no, we don't want, we need to discuss if we want to stay together. So, I mean, until we get a definition, of, we, we're not sure definition. where we're going. Yes, I totally agree with you. But what I'm saying in essence is that, why, why do people want to discuss whether we should stay together? If they have a sense of belonging where they are, Nobody will want to. If, if you have a marriage that is working, you won't ask for divorce. Definitely you won't. If your marriage is working, the man is doing what he's supposed to do, the woman is doing what she's supposed to do, and they have a wonderful family set up with their children and all is going around, there will be no divorce. And that is what I'm saying. The problem is the destructor as it were is not good enough. And that is why some people are saying, let us discuss it. A situation where a certain part of the country sees themselves as lord over and above every other person does not speak well for that, and that is the problem. It's what it used to be um, the South East, even the Southwest now are also agitating. That is where you're hearing of the Odua, Odudua Republic and the rest of them. So it has just gone beyond um, certain part of the country saying this. Other parts are also not feeling secured, and that is what is happening. So the, the foundation of our existence has to do with the law so if we can be able to look at that law, look at um, what is happening yes the federal government take larger percentage of revenue that accrue at the end of it or just give us tips to the state where states cannot be able to look at the minerals and uh, within their uh, within their uh, zones on within their states and be able to explore that because they have to go to the federal government All because right. the government ha federal government has the total control of that if you look at the it. first republic how did the south how did the southwest develop because they were able to use the resources at the cocoa First, I wonder, the in the, in the interest of time we would have to yeah. would have to wrap it up here I, I wish we truly could look at uh, your analogy on the second republic but um we're totally out of time and i uh, would like to say a big thank you for stepping in and for sharing your thoughts with us on these stories um across the country this morning mr chris wandu thank, thank you very much for having me always a pleasure we'll take a short break uh, and we'll be back stay with us